Hello students, welcome to part two. Um, here in this video, I uh, solve this um, second order ODE again, but I do it in such a way as to justify why um, in the previous video, part one, I multiplied that uh, second solution by x. So you recall that the solution to this um, ODE was an arbitrary constant times e to the 4x, and then to get a second linearly independent solution, um, I just uh, multiplied that solution by x. I'm going to verify why that comes out the way it does. So uh, once again, I'm going to write this um, in operator notation. So um, the y double prime is d2 uh, over dx squared times y, being applied to y minus 8 dy dx plus 16y. So I can view this on the left-hand side as um, <clears throat> a differential operator being applied to the y. Um, that's just a fancy term for saying I factor out the y and um, I'm just applying this operator to y. So it means take the set, it's like a function, right? And it happens to be a linear function because you differentiate term by term and you factor out constants. So um, this this uh, operator here is saying, look, take the second derivative of y minus 8 times the first derivative of y plus 16 times y. Okay? Now I can factor this left operator as d dx minus 4 times d dx minus 4 and you can uh, verify that that's the right thing to do. If you have ddx applied to ddx, that's how you get the d squared dx squared. If you just, um, uh, just like you do with algebra here, when you have uh, factoring polynomials or trinomials, um, quadratic trinomials in fact, um, here's the quadratic term corresponds to the d2 dx squared. That's why the characteristic equation um, method works so, technique works so nicely. Anyhow, um, the minus 4 ddx and the minus 4 ddx combine to give you minus 8 ddx and minus 4 times minus 4 is plus 16. So you can verify that um, this operator does decompose into these two operators. Now the next maneuver <coughs> is to let ddx applied, minus 4 applied to y to be u. And um, so I get a secondary ODE I'm going to have to solve. If I distribute the y, I get, uh, or apply this operator to y, I get dy dx minus 4y equals u if I shift that over to the right-hand side. So that leaves me with a ODE here on the left, um, this operator ddx minus 4 being applied to u. And then if I apply that to u, I have du dx minus 4u. Now you'll see that <clears throat> I'll get one solution for this ODE and another solution for this ODE after I solve for u here. So let's just go ahead and do that. I'm going to use integrating factor. So minus 4 is the coefficient here. So if I take the integral of minus 4, I get <clears throat> minus 4x. So I have e to the minus 4x. And um, if I apply e to the minus 4x to each of these terms, um, the left-hand side will collapse uh, as a result of the product rule, and the right-hand side will get 0. So I just do that, and I have the derivative of something equals uh, 0, so that means that something that I was taking the derivative of must be a constant. So then I apply e to the 4x to both sides, and I get y equals c1 e to the 4x. All right, this looks just like our previous uh, um, video, uh, the solution from our previous video. But now, um, oh, these should be u's. I'm sorry. I should uh, fix that. Um, I don't know why I made these y's. These should be u's here. Okay, I apologize for that. Okay, so now I'm going to take this u here and I'm going to um, plug it into um, this ODE here on the right. And um, once again, that was the expected solution from our um, characteristic equation. And uh, now uh, I'm going to put that u, as I said, um, into the right hand side and I'm going to solve this ODE but you know how to do that once again we're going to use integrating factors so um, minus 4 is the coefficient of the y term so that means the integrating factor is e to the minus 4x because if you integrate minus 4 you get minus 4x so I apply that to each of the terms the e to the 4x times e to the minus 4x cancels out and look what happens on the left hand side this compresses due to the product rule but on the right hand side we just get a constant mm, so this derivative is equal to a constant when you integrate both sides you get c1x plus an arbitrary constant. Ah, now that's where the x term shows up. When I apply e to the 4x to both sides, um, I just get y on the left-hand side, and I get this linear term times e to the 4x. And that's why that c1x, um, why that linear term appears in our solution. All right.
as the justification. Good luck.